How do I launch an artifact into code? This year, in Decode, teams will need to launch game pieces into goals approximately three feet off the ground. The goal is mostly in a horizontal plane, meaning teams are going to have to arc their shots to get it in. There are many aspects of a launcher that teams are going to have to consider when designing their robot. Teams may want to consider where they're launching from on the field. Whether you're up close or farther away, that changes how you might want to design your robot. For example, if you're up close, you'll have to take a much steeper launch angle to be able to get the ball to clear the edge of the goal. Whereas farther away, you may need a shallower launch angle to be able to get the range needed to get the ball in the goal. This year's game piece is a ball. Some things we've noted about ball-based projectiles is oftentimes spin has a huge effect on how a game piece flies through the air as well as handles in a goal structure. Teams will want to weigh the differences between topspin backspin, and no spin when launching their game piece. In a topspin-based system, the ball will generally hit the goal and want to bounce forward. In a backspin-based system, the ball will hit the goal and generally want to kick back. In a no or low spin system, there's not a whole lot of reactionary spin force when the ball enters the goal. This year, teams can hold multiple game pieces inside the robot at the same time. With this in mind, teams should focus on figuring out whether they need to be able to move game pieces quickly out of their robot or precisely out of the robot. Being quick and being precise aren't mutually exclusive, but there are some trade-offs. For example, launching game pieces quickly may not always result in the game pieces going in and staying in the goal. Launching game pieces more precisely may take more time, but could net out to scoring more points. This is our Robit starter bot. It uses a catapult to launch the game pieces. Catapults are usually pretty consistent because overall they're relatively simple and they use stored energy to release the game piece in a very controlled manner. On this robot, there's a motor that drives a set of gears to turn this coaxial bar. When this bar rotates, it pushes the catapult arm under the latch and then when it rotates the other direction, it hits the release and causes it to fire. Some things to consider with catapults are hard stop locations to control your shot angle, as well as the release angle of the game piece. Another type of catapult also uses stored energy, but in this case, it uses a cam. Now a cam is an interesting device because it's eccentric. So as it rotates, it'll slowly wind the catapult arm down. And once it reaches the end of the cam arm, it releases all of that energy. This style catapult is very similar to the one found in our Robits Launchers Kit. On this robot, we're utilizing a flywheel based system. In a flywheel, there's wheels that spin incredibly fast to transfer their rotational energy into the ball. As this spins incredibly quick, as we push a game piece into it, it causes it to exit out following the ramp of our hood and up into the goal. This particular configuration is set up to give the ball top spin. On this system, because the wheels are spinning so fast, we're utilizing bearings on either side to make sure that we have a lot of free spinning motion. With our flywheels here, we've added weights to add rotational momentum. So as game pieces move through the system, the wheel doesn't slow down as much. These flywheel weights nest perfectly into our stealth wheels, adding a lot of mass without having to add additional volume. In flywheel-based systems, oftentimes teams will want to use high speed, low reduction motors. In this case, we're using a one-to-one -one gearbox off the motor to provide plenty of speed for this flywheel. For flywheel-based systems, the velocity of the wheel is incredibly important for a consistent launch. We recommend using the built-in encoder on the back of every NeverS motor to be able to get an accurate velocity out of your wheel. Creating curved shapes similar to what you would find in a hood can be hard. This is why we like using this thin plastic material to be formed into place and held with other components such as gussets and beams. This robot is a more advanced style robot and it uses a flywheel system as well. As it moves past the flywheel itself, the ball will react along this hood and come out with backspin. This particular system is a little bit more complicated, utilizing our Robit's turntable for aiming, as well as a Limelight 3A for tracking April tags. This setup is very similar to one featured in our Robit's launcher kit. 
Be sure to note in more advanced systems like this, where you have actuators and sensors on the end of something that move, you're adequately preparing with wire management and strain relief. With a goal that's outside the robot's reach, a launcher is definitely something teams should consider if they want to be successful in the decode challenge. Be sure to check the competition manual for all the rules pertaining to this year's game challenge. And that's how you launch artifacts into code.